observations wherever you may, may be. I'm here with uh, Kirk. Scott may uh, join us as time permits uh, today. How are you, Kirk? I'm great. Thank you so much. Good. And you? Um, I've been better. Yes. Um, several months ago, uh, we uh, were confronted by the reality that uh, one that we thought was part of Yahweh's covenant family had become extraordinarily deceptive and abusive, and that uh, the Facebook page that he ran uh, capitalized on the audience that had been drawn to my translations of Yahweh's word and, and insights derived from it, and blended snippets of what I had learned with some of the most ridiculous lies, both fake news and uh, conspiracies, and thereby misled a lot of people. And we're dealing with that now once again. This time, uh, the abuse may be worse, because the conspiracy isn't the stupidity of the government orchestrated 9-11, or that the government uh, ran... Um, Sandy Hook or uh, the Boston Marathon uh, as false flag operations or that a pizzeria in Washington was used as a pedophile slave ring by the uh, the Clintons or that uh, con uh, trails are really chemtrails or that vaccines are, uh, are the government's and pharma's, big pharma's way of poisoning people. No, this time the conspiracy is the worst in human history. This time the conspiracy is Jews are plotting to enslave Gentiles and to control the world. It is the conspiracy that Hitler capitalized on in Mein Kampf to uh, bring the Holocaust upon the Jews. It is a conspiracy that was capitalized upon by Hadrian. It's the conspiracy that was, whose flames were fanned by the Roman Catholic Church. It is the conspiracy that brought Islam to the forefront. There is nothing worse. Uh, Kirk, um, I don't want to devote this show to uh, to this, other than um, I do want to discuss it briefly. We'll de devote a number of shows to it. Okay. But there are two issues that uh, that I, I would like to address on uh, uh, today. One is uh, you um, have an affinity uh, for uh, an aptitude uh, for uh, historical research, mm -hmm. particularly when that historical research uh, has an, an intersection with uh, Yahweh's word, his plan, his nature. Yes, sir. Um, the four videos, I think, of uh, which uh, you've only at this point seen one of the four. Mm -hmm. uh, three of the four fall into uh, that category, where revisionist history is being used to uh, to perpetrate the myth that. The Jews are clandestinely trying to control the world for um, their benefit and the detriment of all others. Uh, I would very much like you to, and I know you've started, to um, put together a research document that we can share, as we did um, your review of the Exodus and the Amalekites. Are you, are you up for that? Yes, sir. And I have uh, begun in earnest to be I um, it'll take you some places you uh, might be uh, surprised. Wow. Uh, can I jump in for a minute? Yeah, I, I want to tell you that, uh, that uh, Kirk, and I, I want to hear what you have to say. Uh, okay, sure. That uh, one of the conspiracies um, I think Lisa is going to pursue, which is that uh, Jews aren't really Jews, uh, but instead they're, um, uh, they're frauds from other cultures. I don't know if you've tackled that. I think she wants to tackle that. I... I spent considerable time investigating that 15 years ago when it was first brought to my attention. I remember how easy it was to disprove, 
but I've long since lost my notes on it. My memory is not that mm-hmm. good. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, once, once you've proven, so if you've heard of something, you've, sh- you've learned that it is not true because you've done the research, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of, you, 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 <laughs> well, you know, my file cabinet's not big enough and robust enough <laughs> to retain all that knowledge, so uh, it's been shuffled uh, into a dark recess, so uh, I think she wants to tackle that, and there's one of the uh, of the videos of the four primary videos being promoted by the likes of, uh, of Fred, who I'm really shocked is doing this, and Dan, who I'm not shocked at all, is doing it uh, that is uh, that has a different approach, and we'll talk about that in a moment which is to try to discredit Jews by uh, by misquoting and discrediting the Talmud. And uh, that's the one that uh, I have found the easiest to refute, and um, I'll, uh, I'll contribute by tackling that one. Now, go ahead. Well, I, I view things a little different than most people. Uh, I've got big piles of research on certain things pertaining to um, the Northern Tribes of Israel. Uh, as well as I had with the uh, Exodus stories and all, and mm-hmm. what happened when I studied them many, many years ago um, and compiled a lot of this stuff, I didn't have a filter to go to the Torah and say, okay, this is what he really said, what Yahweh really said, mm-hmm. and this is what he meant, and this has to come true in all times, mm-hmm. and, this, and so forth and so on. So when I went back recently to um, the Exodus story, right. which really was... Uh, Overwhelm me with the Amalekites because I really didn't pay much attention to the Amalekites before, other than as a sidebar. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I realized, um, gosh, this is the presentation of the people who become Islam. Yes, now, it is. And, and, and this is the groups. So, and, and now, mm-hmm. the way I view, see, I don't care about the Asian people in the sense of history until they intersect with Israel, because it didn't come up into the Torah until right. 2033 or 2029. You know, when they invade. Right. right. There are three groups that y'all absolutely cannot stand. Islam, Christianity, yes. Yes. and rabbinical Judaism. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say, I think maybe there are four. Okay. And maybe five, maybe four or five. Can I add two? Sure. And you, no, your, your list is, uh, is correct. And those are the big three in terms of the, the three things that God hates the most. But I think there's a couple of other things. Well, of course, as part of Christianity, the ultimate beast is specifically Roman Catholicism. Mm-hmm. So Roman Catholicism is uh, is the whore of Babylon, and Christianity is the uh, the daughter of this whore. Now, um, the other two things that I would like to toss in: mm-hmm. the United States of America. I think yeah. it is a very very high on Yahweh's list of most despised human institutions. Yes. And we've talked about the proof of that and we can do other shows in the future on the on evidence for that. But the United States of America with its uh, intervention in the Middle East and uh, undermining of Israel um, a duplicity regarding Israel and supply of weapons and wars throughout the Middle East and the enriching of Muslims is foremost on God's mind as it relates to despised nations. But I would also say, and I'm convinced, having done the research, that the United States is Tarshish. So when he condemns Tarshish, he's speaking directly to the United States, and we've proven that in past shows. No, no question. Now, the other entity is the religion of man, socialist, secular humanism. Um, It's moral code, political correctness. Now, it was born specifically to replace um, Yahweh and uh, and his message. And so I, I think you could add two entities to your list. The United States, So number one thing that he hates the most, I think, is actually Christianity most of all. Mm-hmm. Second under that, Islam. Third under that, rabbinic Judaism. And, and prioritizing these may be a waste of time. Uh, you might just hate all of them equally. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, clearly, um, not as vehemently, but still with great antagonism, socialist, secular humanism in the United States of America. Yeah. I, I, I divide them in six groups, okay. uh, big groups, and okay. I agree with you that those are them, but I, 
I, I put the United States, even though they're the leader right now, in, in the same category with the uh, uh, the British Empire, which became the Commonwealth, uh, which developed in the United States in the same yes. world, and all through Christianity, uh, strengthened them. Right. Uh, as a well. matter of fact, so that's, that's yeah, yeah. one, one big yeah. group. Yeah, I think that uh, the UK can be brought into that, but I also think the European Union can be brought into it. Well, the Western, the Western democracies and so forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, now, well, especially humanism, I, I don't think they were a great threat to Israel, uh, except that they've uh, taken over Russia and they took over, you know, uh, China and so forth. So, but I have three groups over there. I, I put secular humanism with the group of uh, um, the Chinese yeah. Confucianism group, yeah. as well as the um, India with uh, the Vedanta yeah. faith and Buddhism and all that. But they don't, they don't get talked a lot about until they really come over and start bothering Israel. So, Correct. To, so, so I, those big three are the ones that are just telling him because they're, they don't use Yahweh's name, you know, right. and they may be a replacement for a religion, but they're not, uh, they don't stand up and say Yahweh said and I represent right. Yahweh. Or that God said and I'm God's messenger yeah. or I'm a so prophet of God or God's uncle. I mean, you know he hates that with a passion. Just, That's why he calls, uh, yeah. Yeah. He calls yeah. Paul the plague of death. Uh-huh, and yes. uh, I think I can trace where a lot of that comes from, and that would be interesting. Right, and it's, of course, uh, uh, what's really that interesting. Would, that would be, uh, I think yeah. I've got some pretty cool... Yeah. What's really interesting is that two of those uh, mantras, um, Islam and Christianity, are overtly anti-Semitic. Yeah. They're anti-Torah, they're anti yahweh they're uh, anti-His Mikre, they're, they're against His Covenant, they are against his chosen people. They are against his uh, chosen land. They are overtly anti-Semitic. Right. Now, Judaism is an interesting um, thing, though. Uh, I had someone write me today, uh, said something brilliant, that, and I'd never considered it before. The Talmud is the product of, of child abuse. The, abu the victim are Jews. The perpetrator is the Roman Catholic Church. The Babylonian Talmud was written around 500 CE. It's, it was at the time that, that Rome and Roman Catholicism were most viciously perpetrating attacks against God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. And so much of the Talmud and its, uh, its terminology and its rhetoric is the product of an abused child suffering under uh, the um, the abuses of Christianity and, and Roman Catholicism. doesn't make it right, doesn't justify it, but it is a historical lens to better understand it. Yes, I agree with that. You know, I went to, uh, all week I've been translating uh, Korah 26, Leviticus 26. Mm -hmm. He tells you what he's going to do to you. I mean, he says, this is, this is our deal. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like 48 verses. This is our deal, and, and these, these are the things that are going to happen to you that are wonderful. And, but if you don't, mm -hmm. this is what's going to happen. So they, um, so mm -hmm. he, he tells them, he tells, yep. and he's talking now to Israel and, and uh, the northern tribes and, and the southern tribes. He's right. talking to all of them at the same time. He's, so right. he's in, and all of them follow a pattern, and it's all in there, and I was just amazed. Uh, I hadn't done that before on uh, 26. No. And then uh, I looked at uh, Psalm 2 and Psalm mm -hmm. 83. Mm -hmm. One of them is by Dode, the first one is by Dode, and the other one is by the chief musician of Dode. Mm -hmm. um, and you look at those two, and he, he talks all about uh, anti-Semitism. Is uh, is staring. I don't know how I, how I got there, but I got there anyway through uh, thinking about all these two or three different things uh, that were coming up at the same time. So uh, yeah, can I? Let me check one one uh, thing here. I know there's some people that don't like the term anti-Semitism because they I know they, they, the they, name, because they yeah, no, 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 because they the Semitic tribes, yeah so. because they they view uh, even um, um, Arabs as uh, Semitic peoples. Mm -hmm. um, the basis of uh, of Shem. Name. Means name. Yeah. So, anti-Semite is someone who is against the name. Mm -hmm. What name? Yahweh's name. Yeah. Where is where is Yahweh's name emblazoned 
from his people. They are Yaudemma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, and the anti-Semitism, for those who really understand the root of, of the Hebrew words, is uh, those who are opposed to the name, and the name of Yahweh, and the name that Yahweh emblazoned upon his people. They are Yahud, or Yahudem. It means to relate to Yah, and to be related to Yah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... Um, uh, God has also says, right when he is beginning to establish the covenant with Abraham, that those who um, demean Israel will be demeaned. Mm-hmm. Those who bless Israel will be blessed. In fact, one of these perpetrators, uh, that, that these ignoramuses that that has been promoting these anti-Semitic rants, actually cited, you know, uh, it sounds religious to me, this bless uh, uh, Israel and you'll be blessed, curse Israel and you'll be cursed. That sounds like a religious rant to me. Of course, that's what Iowa says. And then he says, F-bomb Israel, and then F-bomb everything else. It's his favorite word, is the F-bomb. I mean, it's just so... Well, well, why don't we think about it? If, if you attack Israel... Mm-hmm. The people who have brought you the Torah, right? You got no hope in hell. Excuse of my course, language, but you, you know, you need right. here. Yeah, to but claim to be to claim to be part of the covenant while abusing Israel and uh, and and Yahudim Jews uh-huh. is schizophrenic because the covenant is the family of Israel. The covenant was was created through Israel, for Israel, on behalf of Israel, and 100% of what is known about it was conveyed mm-hmm. by Israelites. Yeah. I mean, as a, as a Goyim Gentile, uh, we're invited guests who have been given this marvelous opportunity be, uh, by Yahweh to be adopted into the family of Israel. Yes. But it's their family. How could you be opposed to Israel and claim to be part of the covenant? It's schizophrenic. Yeah, well, it doesn't make any sense at all. It's just ridiculous. So how, how can you go there? How can you be opposed to what Yahweh loves, his chosen people and his land? And, what's the, and, and, and Zion is the signpost along the way leading you home, and right. you're going to attack Zionism? I mean, oh, wait, man. Come on, give me a break. The, the author of Zionism is Yahweh. Yeah. To be opposed to Zionism is to be opposed to Yahweh. And yeah. by the way, you know, if you study the history of Zionism, two things uh, jump out at you. Number one is these morons that uh, that misquote the Talmud to infer that that Jews are trying to control the world and that they then tuck all of this under um, the umbrella of Zionism are morons. The those who are Zionists are almost exclusively socialist, secular humanists. They've not been rabbinic Jews. And number two, the purpose of Zionism was to allow Israelites to go home to Israel. God gave it to them. It's theirs. This is what God wants. To be opposed to... Even the secular humanist Zionist principles is to be opposed to something that is extraordinarily important to Yahweh. He gave them the land, and he's going to call them back home. In fact, he's already begun doing so. Well, I can't imagine anyone who reads the Torah as much as some of these people who are supposed to have been reading the Torah can come to those, can watch those tapes and come to a conclusion and, and agree with anything that's in it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you that I, I've been given a lot of thought to something, and you probably noticed some of my emails. Yes, that um, um, I've given a lot of thoughts as to how complicit am I in the uh, the mess that we are witnessing. You're none? Uh, well, no, I, 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 I disagree. Um, and the first thing I thought is, I have done what Yahweh and Yosha never did. I took the Torah and explained what it represents. 
clearly, systematically, over. So the covenant in parables? Right. I took the covenant and explained the conditions that were laid out to participate in it and the benefits of it. I took the seven mikra and explained what each of them represents and how they relate to the covenant. But, but how else could you do that if you didn't carefully, I mean, you carefully observed the Torah, closely I, examined the Torah. What I, did wasn't, what, what I did wasn't wrong, it's just and what you I did, so Yahweh doesn't do. Yahweh takes these stories, these presentations, these ideas, and he shares them in an ocean of words. They are presented in the context of some three million words. And what I did, because it's just my nature, is I pulled out the this, this, this salient points, the key attributes, I pulled them out and ordered them in a way that they could be readily and easily understood. They didn't do that. And so I was, I was willing to accept blame for doing something that I know has tremendously helped many hundreds of people. Mm-hmm. Myself, yourself yeah. included. Yeah. And, and I was also willing to, to take and shoulder responsibility because by doing so I made it possible for people to parrot those terms and to make claims that weren't based on an understanding. Mm-hmm. And then I, I thought some more about all of this, and I came to realize that, that I don't think what I did was wrong. Because, uh, and I'm, I'm talking out loud here, Kirk, and I'm open to, uh, to criticism. Um, yada, yada, an introduction to God, questioning Paul, and observations for our time. Collectively are probably 10,000 pages. Mm-hmm. I've hardly laid it on a silver platter and say, this is all you need to know. i presented what Yahweh said in context. I've proven that he is, in fact, God. I've proven that he inspired the words that we are translating. I've provided the tools for somebody to verify that these translations are accurate. Mm-hmm. But I, I didn't do so on, here's the Cliff Notes summation of these things. Here's the four spiritual laws. No. It ain't I the pre- easiest read. No, it isn't the easiest read. And, and I presented it in an ocean of supporting material. Yeah. And I refused. That's been the biggest complaint. Right. I mean, I re- give me the easiest version. Right. And I, re- yeah. and I refuse to do that. Yes. So, 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 the more I thought about it, the more I said, you know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't be blaming myself here. No, I don't think you should. So I began to think of, well, what happened? How did so many people start parroting Yahweh's name and claim to be covenant whose own words prove that they are neither? Like, for example, Larry. All of those who who sided with with Larry when he was so into his conspiracies, he still is, and his abusive rhetoric, which he still is, and, and now the likes of Fred and Dan. How is it possible that these people could claim to be covenant and use snippets out of my translations and transliterations, my terminology, my insights, and not have a clue, and to be not only to be deceiving others that they are part of the covenant, but to be deceiving themselves? How is that possible? No, it dawned on me. It wasn't my presentation. It was Larry's. It was the environment. It was the environment on social media and uh, and uh, and in uh, Facebook, where were snippets of what I came to know, the clip notes, if you will. Yeah, if you cut out if you cut out a passage just like right. Christian Savoy. Right. You can make anything out of it you want. You you Who's take you, right. you take all the context away, and you you uh, you present snippets of of truth, but don't but don't just leave it there. 
around those snippets of truth, you babble. You intermix oceans of conspiracy theories and fake news. And all of a sudden, now you create an environment where, where people make claims that they're covenant and that they use Yahweh's name and they use the terminology that has been usurped from my books without any understanding, without any context. And it explains how it is that as a, as a group in social media, they deceive themselves and others, claiming to be what they clearly are not. I mean, they're defined by their words, and their words are despicable. The words prove that they are not covenant, that they do not know Yahweh. And it's dawned on me that the reason is that the environment into which they were exposed was sinister, was malignant, was poisonous. Took the same thing as, as Paul did, the same thing that Muhammad did, which was to take little snippets of truth out of context and then mix it with, with enormous numbers of the most vicious lies. Mm -hmm. And what you create is is the appearance of something that is credible, believable, when it is an absolute fraud. And tremendous damage has been done. Many, many people have been misled to thinking that they are part of God's family, that they, they know Yahweh, that they are accepted into his home when it just is not the case. And they've gone on to abuse and to mislead others. Well, if you got up in the morning and you read the Torah, like you said, and you went to bed with the Torah at night, you, you can't get there from where you they can't are. Get there. You can't get to where they are. Right. The reason you couldn't get there to where you uh, where they are, the reason that um, our mutual friend Roy can't get there, uh -huh. the reason that Jackie can't get there, yeah, Terry, yeah, all of us. The reason that uh, Terry can't get there, the reason that my good friend Dode from uh, Down Under can't get uh -huh. there, is that. They took what I wrote as just a starting point, as an introduction, as, as a reason to study. And they studied. They didn't get their insights from Facebook. They didn't participate in conspiracy theories and fake news. They didn't begin to parrot ideas until they had studied and learned all of it, yourself particularly. It's, it's this willingness to do as Yahweh requests, to closely examine and carefully consider his word. That makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. You know, being part of the covenant, knowing Yahweh, is a lifetime adventure. And it has to be done through the Torah, through the prophets, through the Psalms, with an open mind, in a rational way, by closely examining and carefully considering what God had to say. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm reminded if the, the saying of Yosha is true about the sword of the sea parable, then mm -hmm. very few make it. Because he said only a few will mm -hmm. persevere, will several um, endure, and most of them will be either shriveled up, down, or fall off. I mean, so I don't worry that they take your English translations of the Torah and they twist them and do their thing. All you can do is disassociate from people like that, and you say, okay, you and try to stop them if you can. You know, yeah. using you, you, you have to refute what they're saying. Right. Yeah. You, know, you, you have to refute what they're saying because they're yeah. what they're saying. What they're saying. Put it out yeah. there that this is terribly, terribly wrong, and I, I have to this. I'll bet that there are tens of thousands of people who have been turned away from Yahweh mm -hmm. and who have rejected His covenant because of the poison. And the venom, the the abuse that emanated out of unpopular truth, mm -hmm. 
and that is still being reflected through the uh, the likes now of uh, of Fred and um, and Dan. Tens of thousands of people. So we do have to confront it. We yeah. do have to refute it. And you know. Kirk, I, I think I shared um, this in a number of the emails that I sent to you. There is a place where I bear a lot of blame, and and there's just no no refuting this. Am I responsible for uh, Larry being uh, a uh, an extraordinarily evil and destructive man? No, no. But I am responsible for including him on these programs mm -hmm. and for speaking know. positively about uh, unpopular truth mm -hmm. long after I had become aware through through countless emails that he was abusive. Yeah. And I heard him, and every time he brought it up, one of his conspiracy theories, I refuted them, it admonished him for, for them. But I never went to a site. I never looked and discovered for myself how bad it was until it became so horrific that there was no choice but to deal with him. And I made a mistake. I should have, have been intolerant. I should have separated myself and these programs from him very early on. If I had done so, tens of thousands of people now that have been turned away because of what he said, did, I now know Yahweh and be part of his covenant. I made a horrible mistake. And, you know, I'm not going to make that mistake again now with, uh, with this, the worst of conspiracies being promoted by... Uh, Fred and Dan. Not going to do it again. Man, that's the right thing. Yeah, you're doing the right thing. I mean, you know, you, we you, all you, make mistakes. I mean, right. that's, that's, we all make mistakes, and thank goodness that Yahweh's mistake meter is written in the imperfect. Yes. Which all you have to do is stop making the same mistake, yeah. Yeah, and you're no longer guilty of it. Yeah. You know, I made the mistake with Larry. So many people suffered because of my failure to act. Well, but you know, but you know, thousand, so. yeah, but you know, I can, I can learn. I did the wrong <laughs> thing, and uh, and somewhere along the way, I realized that we can't make that mistake. You know, there is a tendency because so many of us came out of Christianity mm -hmm. to carry this uh, misnomer of Christianity along with us that we should be nice. Yeah. That we should be accepting, uh, yeah, being, uh, tolerant. right? Yeah, it's like you know when yeah, no. uh, when I um, I mocked Moody Jeff for what he wrote, yeah, because what he wrote was horrible. What he had to say was disgusting, and I exposed it and I condemned it, and then I had a longtime member of the Covenant viciously attack me for what I said. Well, I'm here to tell you, we have to stop carrying through this legacy of Christianity, of being tolerant, of being nice, of being accepting, pretending that we should love everyone. It's nonsense. Well, you can't find it in Yahweh's words. No, nor in Yahweh's. Nor in Yahweh's. Because well, those are his words. Those are Yahweh's words. That is correct. And we, we need to be more like him as part of his family, and immediately reject these people. You know, so many have chosen to wallow in a cesspool of human diarrhea. They don't want out. They want to pull others in. We cannot and should not try to pull them out. Yahweh didn't. Yosha didn't. We shouldn't. We ought not even go by and encourage them with helpful, uplifting words because then we'll get smeared with that same 
human excrement. They chose their cesspool. Let them wallow in it. Say goodbye. Sure, we can do our best to drain that swamp. We can do our best to, to expose what's in that cesspool. And do our best to encourage people not to be, not to jump in with them. But, but if you ask, words don't resonate when you give it, you can't, right. nothing you're going to add to them. Right, and they don't, by the way, with, with these people. They don't. And that's the way you, you, you know, I, I have been condemned particularly by Dan for uh, stating that, that there is no way that uh, Larry is in the covenant. None. There's no way that those who who became vicious along with him and who continued to promote the most irrational of conspiracy theories, even when confronted with Yahweh's testimony, said, don't do that. Do not promote conspiracy theories. That it was obvious that they didn't care what Yahweh had to say. They didn't know him. They were not part of the covenant. And I was condemned for saying, you know, you don't have the authority to say that. Who made you God? Is their uh, their off repeated line? No one. And yes, I do. What an absurd thing to say. Yeah. Well, the first is absurd, but the second is yes, I do. Yahweh yeah, didn't leave us in the dark. No. He told us precisely what we needed to do if we wanted to be part of His family, and what would irritate Him. And if with anyone, he told us, if you want to test whether or not their inspiration comes from me or from someone else, here's the test to deploy. He gave us all of the information we need to determine whether what someone was saying was of him or in opposition to him. I can tell you, the stuff that I read on Fred's site, on Dan's site, and on Larry's site, was in direct opposition to him. And, you know, it's... Kirk, until I, um, I studied Islam, and until I really thought about what transpired in the garden with uh, Hasatan and Chawa, Mm-hmm. I really didn't understand um, satanic influence. But, you know, the fact is that the, that Satan is absolutely willing to use Yahweh's name. He knows it. Mm-hmm. He's absolutely willing to take snippets of what Yahweh said and take them out of context and to twist them to give a, a false impression. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Well, this should make you feel better. It just occurred to me. Yeah. Uh, Yosha walked around for over three years with a guy named Judas. He did. Mm -hmm. And he didn't kick him out. He knew he was. He didn't kick Satan out of the garden. You know, but but keep this I know, in mind. I know, but I mean, uh, keep, it's keep, a keep, parallel, keep, but I mean, it's still okay. uh, there out there. Okay. Um, Yosha knew, of course, that Judas would betray him. Yeah, and it was a necessary thing. At but, the time, too. but but yeah. think about this. Judas did not deny that he was Yosha. He didn't corrupt his message. He didn't denounce. His role in fulfilling the Moed Mikre didn't do any of that. There is no evidence whatsoever that Judas said anything to promote a conspiracy theory, fake news, to undercut, undermine Yahweh's message, Yosha's message. Is there? Well, he tried to turn him over to the, you know, he turned him oh, over to the Sanhedrin. That's uh, all he did. He, just stuck him. he turned him over to the Sanhedrin. He he told the Sanhedrin where to find him. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. That's all he did. Right. right? Yeah, he, that's all he did. He told the Sanhedrin where to find him. Is that wrong? Sure. 
and yet not really. Really, not really. No, well, yeah, we could deal with that. If, of if, course. If you wanted to be found, they, they oh, of course. And so there's no argument. Right. There. But this idea that, uh, that Yosha, because I want to be really careful, mm-hmm. because someone might say, well, listen, if Yosha uh, accepted Judas and his company for three years, when he knew that uh, Judas would betray him, then we should keep the likes no, of, no, no, that's of, the point. of these anti-Semites in our, uh, in our company. And, and I want to make it clear that, uh, well, that there's, a tremendous, there's a tremendous difference between what these people are promoting, how they're blending lies and truth and misleading people, and are abusive with what Judas did. No, he didn't let any of those people in his camp. No, Judas did not refute anything that Yosha said or Yahweh said. Point taken. He didn't didn't denounce our creator replacement covenant. He didn't write any letters like Paul to, uh, to claim that all of God's prior testimony was for naught and that, that he was inspired to, to create a new plan. He didn't write anything. He didn't say anything. We don't have anything from him other than this is where you'll find him. Well, Simone Kevich did the right thing. When he got told, he called him in. They, he asked, they broke yeah. him out and then he kicked him out. Mm-hmm. That's so, correct. Uh, exactly what he did and that's the right thing to do. That's the right thing to do. Right, you know when uh, when Israel became hopeless, mm-hmm. Yahweh well, arranged for them to be kicked out. Mm-hmm. He gave Yahuda a second chance. When they became hopeless, he allowed them to be kicked out, and he gave them a second chance. Mm-hmm. And he'll give them a third very soon. But you know. God is intolerant of these things. And, you know, it's one thing to criticize Judaism. But it isn't okay to be a racist and to tar Jews with the failings of Judaism. You know, most Jews are not religious. It's overwhelming preponderance of Jews are not religious. No. And so to to condemn a race because of a religion is wrong. It's irrational. Mm-hmm. And it's immoral. And if you're going to attack the religion, Judaism is an extremely complex and extremely um, thorough religion. You know, I um, I wrote a thousand-page book exposing and condemning the words and deeds of Muhammad by taking the Quran and putting it into the context of the Hadith uh, and uh, reordering everything chronologically. And by doing so, I was able to expose Muhammad as a as a pervert, as a sexual pervert, as a rapist and pedophile as a mass murderer and ruthless terrorist, a liar. But it wasn't um, cursory. I didn't rely on somebody else's uh, misquotes. didn't cite anybody else. I did the research. I studied the Quran. I studied the Hadith. I used the two to, to, to put the Quran in chronological order, and then I systematically, based upon their words and deeds, Exposed and condemned the Quran, Muhammad, Allah, and Islam. In questioning Paul, I didn't take snippets of what Paul said out of context. No, I took the entire first book that he wrote, Galatians, every word of it. Mm-hmm. Five translations of every statement he made. And then systematically compared what he wrote to what God had actually said. Thorough, complete. Accurate, fair. If you want to expose and condemn rabbinic Judaism, have at it. But I want to tell you something. If you want to do it, you need to devote years to it. The Talmud is a very long book. You need to understand it in historical context. 
and then systematically refute it by comparing what the rabbis argued about to what Yahweh actually said. And if you're willing to be That's a, a thorough researcher mm-hmm. and rational individual and exercise good judgment, have at it. But don't quote an anti-Semitic rant from somebody who is misciting, misquoting the Talmud, because all you do then is you spur on anti-Semitism. You make the problem worse, not better. Now, I went through the first, I think it was five citations on one of these videos that this moron that had this Jewish headband had on, and as he would read through them and make these quotations from the Talmud, I looked up every one of them. Talmud said no such thing. Everyone was a lie. And then what I did is I googled the things that he was talking about and found out that there's scores, hundreds of anti-Semitic websites that parrot these same miscitations. Really? Oh, hundreds of them. It, it took me 30 minutes to go through the first five. And not a word that they were saying was true. And even the basis of their claim was absurd because they were blaming the race of Jews on the content of the Talmud without having any historical understanding of it or accurate rendering of it. When in fact, the very Jews that they're angry at are socialist, secular humanists. It was racist. It was ignorant. It was irrational. It took 30 minutes. So how in the world could you promote such a thing or support the promotion of such a thing, identify with the promotion of such a thing, join sides with those who are promoting such rubbish when it takes 15 minutes to refute it? Mm-hmm. 30 minutes to review it. They didn't want to find out. No, that's right. That's right. Because they're lazy. Because they're religious zealots. I think they they found what they were looking for, and they used it like the preacher who goes, gets another theologian to tell him what he wants. Yeah. And they're irrational. But it's a laziness. You know, um, I have been angry at the effects of academia, particularly socialist secular humanism and its moral code, political correctness, because it has rendered generations incapable of thinking. Mm -hmm. They aren't rational. They aren't reasonable. They don't know how to exercise good judgment. And they've just lost the ability to understand the rules of debate, of rhetoric. Mm -hmm. And seeing these kinds of easily refuted lies presented as if they were a blight on a race of people is evidence of that, of an inability or an unwillingness to think, to study, to learn. And then just to say, I'm promoting this this video and attack anyone who's critical of it. God, can you imagine something so lazy? It's just really pathetic. And it's dangerous. It's venomous. Yeah, I'm personally upset because you know, I've devoted 15 years to translating Yahweh's testimony, to thinking about it and discerning a myriad of insights. And sharing those in book forms freely and on these radio broadcasts freely. And by having people take snippets of the terms that I use and transliterations that I use and and insights that I've gleaned and mix it in with such hideous lies is extraordinarily damaging. If you can read your material, your translations, or or just the, the, the Masoretic, Text mm-hmm. with some minor adjustments. Mm-hmm. If you can read all that and you can come out and become anti-Semitic, something is wrong with you. Something, something's wrong with you. 
And they'll claim, of course, that oh, we were just really attacking the Israeli government. No, they weren't. Not not one of those videos was attacking no, the Israeli attacked. government. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, I only saw the one, but no. No. And, you know, no, they used then that. Then they'll say, well, we're not attacking Jews. We're attacking no. Zionists. Yeah. Yeah, well, I got news for you. Zionism is Yahweh's term. Yeah. The signpost along the way. Mm-hmm. It's his home. They're his people. And I had one person write me and said, well, you know, I thought that, that those videos were just a political attack. Oh, come on. And why would you support them if you didn't even bother to watch them? And how could you promote them? You know, when I went to the, uh, the sites that had each of these four videos, the first thing I did is read the comments people posted after them. Some of the most vile, disgusting human beings on the planet are endorsing them. Anti-Semites, a lot of them. Neo-Nazis, many of them. These people hate Jews. Hate Israel. Hate the God of Israel. By the way, how many times does Yahweh say, I am the God of Yisrael. I am the God of Abraham, of Yishak, and of Jacob. And what does Jacob mean? What did Yahweh call Jacob? Yisrael. Yisrael. I am the God of Yisrael. And you're going to condemn Yisrael? Yeah. And you're going to come with this convoluted theory that Israel really isn't Israel. It sounds like the Roman Catholic Church and replacement theology, that all of the promises God made to Israel, he was really dyslexic. And he really meant these are the promises to the Christian church. Oh, yeah. It's revisionist replacement theology, and it's bogus. It's deadly. It's deceitful. It's disgusting. It's irrational. It's ignorant. So, uh, Kirk, with uh, you and Lisa, and I, and I hope anyone who is listening to this program, I, I don't want you to be feel in any way that um, that we want to limit the research to Kirk or Lisa. Oh no, I'm just they both volunteered, and they both have an aptitude for it, and I'm going to do one, which is the uh, the. Um, misquotations of the uh, of the Talmud uh, that was being promoted uh, on one of the uh, the sites and um, and we'll have you and, and Lisa do the other three but if you're listening and you have a desire to contribute send me an email it's email at yada yada dot, uh, dot com email at yada yada dot com send me an email volunteer I uh, I am quite certain that Kirk and that Lisa are not going to feel the least bit snubbed (laughs) if somebody else wants to participate. We have a lot of smart people out there. You know, I'm encouraging the likes of Roy, who's brilliant. I know this is not his his power alley, but he could make a marvelous contribution here. Jackie is another. I know Jackie spends a lot of time devoted to uh, to improving the, the spelling and grammar in, uh, in these books. And that she hasn't branched out into done something like this yet, but there's a very, very smart, extremely well-informed individual that knows the Torah and prophets, understands them intimately. Make a tremendous contribution here. Now, I, I want this to be a family affair where... where we deal with the single worst conspiracy ever perpetrated by humankind. The one that bothers God the most. And um, let's devote a series of shows to it. If you want to contribute, by all means, we want you to contribute. If you want to advance the, uh, the propaganda, no. Have no interest, but we'll share the um, the statements that have been promoted, and then the truth. Okay. As you have said, Kirk, it it um, it's always interesting as to where the uh, when you 
track down these lies when you search for the truth where it leads? Well, I was interested when we did the Amalekite stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I could find something as far back as when uh, anti-Semitism uh, as a as a an attack on Jerusalem on uh, Yudim. That's the earliest one I can find. And what they did was they decided revisionist history. They made because everybody hated the Amalekites. What they did is they revised history and they said that the people who were the Amalekites instead of the ones from Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. they were uh, the Jews. Yeah. And and <laughs> then everybody said, oh, okay, well then they're the dirty dogs. And replacement I'm going, history. Your pardon? Yeah, replacement history. Yeah. Yeah, and it's impossible to come to that conclusion if you're no, you 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 you're, you're uh, lucas. Right. But they did, just like, and, and all they had to do was parrot it, and before you knew it, it was all over the Greek and Roman world. Yeah, and of course, one of the things that uh, you did is that there are so many scholars in academia okay. that would have you believe that the Exodus is just a story and that it never occurred or that the flood never occurred. Mm -hmm. And and they have all of these scholastic arguments, all of which are based in fable and revisionist right. history, and yet the evidence... From the Egyptians of, <laughs> of the Egyptian witnesses yeah. of the uh, uh, of the plagues and the consequence yeah, of the Amalekites in the land of Islam, right? The record, of right? Is that one of them? The same overwhelming, time. overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. It's it's overwhelming. Of the Greek world. They all right. said yes. All these things happened. It destroyed this. No, 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 no. Right. Yeah. This was a cataclysmic event, uh, and. Uh, Moshe knew him was coming right down to the day. Right. So uh, that's and everything. All the pieces fit once you once you see it. Right. But you got to be you got to know the Torah enough to go back to it. And some of the stuff that I'm working on right now, you have to have a, you have to know the Torah well enough to go in there and and make sure you're not reading the translation wrong and yeah. basing it on a mistranslation. Yeah. Let me share with another concern. You know, I did that um, show on. Uh, on coast to coast, mm -hmm. and I must have laid on the audience twenty just nuclear bombs. You would think, no, uh, uh, that that any one of which the host and the audience should have have said, yeah. "Whoa, wait can you prove this? Yeah. Wait a wait a minute here." That's overwhelming. That is so profoundly important. If you can prove that, it changes everything. Yeah. At least 20, maybe 30, maybe 40, maybe 50 of them over the course of those three hours. Or two hours, whatever it was. And, and yet there wasn't a single reaction from the host. Not even a comment post-show. No. I think I told you that the next day. I, I, couldn't, I, was, blown, I was blown away. Blown away. No I mean, way. Even as a good host, if they didn't believe a right. thing you said, I would say, well, can you explain no. that? Why do you believe that? Why yeah, they, you know, one of the callers wanted to say, well, you know, people are accusing you of being part of a cult. Another one of the uh, the uh, the callers wanted to make it sound like that uh, I was endorsing Christianity and wanted to brag about his churches. And then the three of the callers wanted to say, you know, I... Why don't we ignore this guy that is providing soul-saving information that is that is is telling us something that is extraordinarily profound about the very nature of life yeah. and the the existence of God? Why don't we ignore what he has to say and instead invite Donald Trump onto this program? Boy, that'll be that'll be the day, wouldn't that be just that'll perfect? Show. That'd be a show. <laughs> and so. You think about that and you say, maybe the world is so numb, has been rendered so stupid, that they don't even know how to react to the truth. They yeah. don't know how to deal with it when it's laid out before them. My sentiments exactly. Exactly. <laughs>